Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chan, and today we are chatting with... I'm Sebastiano Poggi. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Um, where are you based and what do you do? I work at Novoda. I'm an Android GDE uh, based in London. Uh, I'm an Android craftsman, as craftsman. we call ourselves. What does that ever mean? software engineer that cares i guess oh that's okay. my take on it anyway. okay i like that I yeah like that. great and uh, how do you get started on android uh it all started a long time ago so i will not bore <laughs> everyone with the details but right. i basically bought uh mark murphy's book uh common square and mm -hmm. started reading it just uh, like one day you wake up in the morning and say i'll buy mark murphy's I, book <laughs> i was like i need I, I want a smartphone i want to try uh -huh doing something with it mm -hmm. um, and then I saw uh, the Commonsware book and I bought it and that's how I started and from there it was like blogs, uh, tutorials on the so internet. So you were doing mostly hobby projects before you yeah. did professionally? Yeah, yeah okay. I had been coding uh, as a hobbyist, really poor hobbyist <laughs> for a couple of years before actually starting doing it as a profession. Well. I think you're doing quite well now, seeing that you've been speaking at conferences all over the world. Um, in fact, we're actually in New York right now, since uh, Joy-Con New York City is happening tomorrow. Yeah. And you are going to give a talk on tools? Yeah. Can you give us a little sneak preview on uh, what yeah, you're sure. covering? So um, the tools are uh, an aspect of the Android development that I, I think most of the time is not really considered. Mm. Uh, so for example, there's a lot of tips and tricks that you can use during your, uh, your development uh, to save time or to avoid bugs, which is okay. just as important and boils down to saving time in the end because you don't have to debug. Right. So what is one example that you can use a tool to catch bugs? So when I, when I talk about tools, I mean uh, in particular in this case in my talk uh, to aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you might have noticed that sometime uh, when you have an XML layout or some uh, any other kind of, uh, of XML, then you have some attributes that have the namespace tools. Yeah, the auto-generated one. Yes, that's exactly. That for, what is it for the activity? Like they put tools yes, or something. Why is context. It, why is there the context there? So uh, that, that is there because that way Android Studio can pick up automatically uh, uh, pulling infos from the manifest and from the activity class uh, the appearance of the activity itself, so it can pick oh, the theme for oh, the preview, right, for example. Because the XML, the layout XML itself does not have the theme exactly. attached to it. Oh, so they actually will kind of reach out yeah. to the manifest, it's some using kind the activity of, to link it back together. Yes, it's some metadata oh. that allows the, the IDE to be clever about the, the stuff it's showing to you. Now the word contact makes a lot of sense, because you know, yeah. Android context, yeah. right? it's a completely different concept. Yes. So. It used yeah. to be uh, called activity once upon a time at the early days of it oh. and then they changed the name I suppose because it can be used for um, content uh, for fragments as well right so you can still use the theming um, yes and so trace it up yeah because for fragments I mean for activities usually Android Studio is able to pick up the theme by itself now mm. it didn't used to but for fragment it can't I so see. the context is particularly important in that case great um, what other tools? Uh, I think what we are talking about right now is mostly if you go into the XML desk, like, you know, usually you have Android colon yeah. something, and then you have tools colon something. Yeah. So we covered tools colon context. Is yes. there any other one that you think of uh, that's really interesting? Well, there's, there's a really a lot of them, uh, but the, the most interesting ones mm -hmm. to me are, well, first of all, ignore. Okay. Because sometimes you get uh, some warnings from Lint. Uh, that right. you don't really care about, like this image is missing the content description, but it's just uh, something uh, like a, an element that doesn't need to have any kind of interaction for the user. So it's not relevant for accessibility. And in that case, you want to suppress so the warning. For that particular example, do you put the ignore on the image view itself then? Yes. Okay. Because you know, sometimes you can put it also on a much higher level. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a broader discussion because it's, uh -huh. it's the same can, can be done for uh, suppressed warnings, uh, right. annotations in the, in the Java code. Mm -hmm. You usually want to have them as close as possible to the, the actual... Smaller scope. Yeah, to, with a smaller scope because yeah. otherwise you might, meet, you might miss something that otherwise you right. want to be alerted yeah, about. Yeah, I've actually used it in a particular way, which is that... Um, so I 
put my strings usually in strings.xml yes. but sometimes I use the strings as a constant essentially so they don't need to be translated mm -hmm. and then Android Studio will yell at me it's like well, this is not translated so I'll actually have a separate file usually I call variables.xml mm -hmm. and I put at top level tools ignore missing translation or something actually, like that actually in that case for strings yeah? you can use the an unbound attribute which, which is called if I recall correctly translatable oh. and set it to false on the strings you don't want itself. to itself yeah See, always learn something when I talk to people. <laughs> I should look that up. Um, so that is a, is it in the tools namespace as well? Yes. Oh. Uh, no, actually, no. I think that one is not in the tools namespace because it used to be there before. The so tools. it's just not in any namespace, yeah, just hanging it's up. Unbound, like layout. Yeah. yeah, like layout. Layout is so confusing. Every time I try to use it, yeah. It's a little bit off topic, but like, it's like, is it Android layout or is it layout? And no. both are used in different situations. We'll yeah, talk there's about also that some tools other layout if you want. For no, <laughs> no, why? Why do you have to confuse me? Okay, well, maybe some other episode <laughs> we'll talk about the confusing like, layout problems like view stops and whatnot. Um, so actually, uh, one attribute that I myself love to use is tools colon show in. Yes. Do you use that as well? Yeah. So it, maybe you should do the description since you yeah. have a guest. Thank you. <laughs> um, showing is really useful uh, of an attribute. It's used when you have uh, a merge. So you, you know you can split your layouts uh, using the mechanism of includes. Right. So you can basically say, OK, here I don't want to specify this big linear layout, which contains, I don't know, maybe 10 items that mm -hmm. I'm going to use here and there and there. Right. So you can reuse things by uh, uh, splitting them out and using the include tag right. where you want to use them mm -hmm. and the merge tag as a root element for mm -hmm. the layout that needs to be placed around. Right. So the show in is particularly useful in that case because mm -hmm. it gives the preview the an idea, again, the, the context in which that layer will be used right. because merge by itself is treated as a frame layout. Mm -hmm. But if you are oh, using so that's a it, default. Yes, okay. so by, by default. So they just slap things on top of each yes, other if you basically. don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you can't change that, but you can in the preview at least have the, the, the layout, the mm. merge showing in the context where it's going to be used. So in, if you ah. have a linear layout that contains an include right. and you have linear layout attributes like weight, mm -hmm. then it should be shown in the preview with the correct attributes and the correct uh, stuff around it. Like I see. So that you can tell and just do essentially like these are going to be merged into yes. this particular situation rather than saying, I don't yeah. know, I'll just put it in a yeah. frame layout. There's one caveat about that, mm. about that attribute, which is you have to have an include in the target layout right. that you specify that uses the same layout you So using. it has to be consistent. Yes. It cannot just be like, you know what, I'm going to hang out with this yeah. other layout that is not pretend. going to be using me. <laughs> yeah, pretend it's there as well. It yeah. doesn't work like that okay. because Android Studio needs to know where the so layout actually, goes. That's true. Like, even though, you, you, if, even if you point to another layout, you still need to know where exactly yes. you need to insert. It the, cannot the, just figure out right. that, that much. That makes a lot of sense. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it does. I don't even know why you would try to pretend, but yeah. Maybe you try that. Typos. That's how you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Cool. Um, actually, speaking of that, so I think one nice thing about that when we're talking about that is that you can see the preview in the Android Studio, which is why you can see the things that are overlapping. Because in your own app, the actual app once you deploy, you're not going to see it overlap yeah. because it's going to be in the actual linear yes. layout. Um, so I also know that when you do the preview, you can also actually change the attributes that is just for the tools preview, but yes. not in the actual app. So that is called uh, design time override. Mm -hmm. So you can basically take any attribute in the Android namespace and change the namespace right. from Android to tools. And whatever you assign to those attributes is only going to be assigned at design time. So you right. can have, for example, if you're trying to tweak the bounds of something, you can have, mm -hmm. instead of Android background, you can have tools background and mm. set like green or solid red or something like oh. that. And then you have the bounding boxes and you can see Also, you can stuff. visualize that. Yes. But like your app is not going to have that running. ugly, yes. giant, bright, green yeah. box. Oh, that's a good trick to use. It's, yeah. also, it's also useful for uh, overriding text. So if mm. you have some text views and you don't want to, of course, as create and assign the lorem ipsum or whatever right. to it. But uh, you still want to see that in preview yes. so that it's not just like a blank line. Exactly. Right. So you can have that. That's cool. 
Um, so you mentioned two things, right? You said we can use it to catch bugs and also save time. Yeah. What is an example of saving time? With well, the tools this one. Okay. You don't have you don't have to run the app to see what oh, it's going to look like. Oh, that's true. Oh my god, yeah, like because I deploying mean, deploying takes a while. Yeah, especially yeah. with big apps with a lot of dependencies, mm -hmm. it might take a while. So it's way better to to have an an idea in the preview, which right. is usually not 100% accurate, but it's yeah. close enough to uh -huh. know if you're doing it right or not. So the way you will do it is that you want to change some behavior, yeah. but then you will change it using the tools um, prefix yeah. so that yes. you're not actually going to change the app. And then you just preview and say, oh, OK, it looks like that if I have a really, really long text, this is not going to work. Let me add a scroll view or something exactly. like that. Exactly. And another thing I like to do is mm -hmm. Uh, it's mostly for the text attribute actually, mm -hmm. but I, I like to uh, commit into into version control uh -huh. the tools text attributes. So oh. I don't have to bind anything at runtime, mm -hmm. but in the preview I can still the, the next person that opens the layout will still right. have an idea of where things are lined up and how they look. So they can visually tell yes. what this. Layout files exactly. supposed to do. Because otherwise, if you have like if everything is empty or blank because you don't want You're to waiting for the server to load the data. Yeah. Right. So you don't need to you don't need to rely on uh, on the on the runtime to visualize how things right. look. You just see it in, in the IDE for with some mock data that you make up. Great. So that's a great time saver in my experience. Cool. Um, so we're not going to like keep on and on and on because since like he made a talk, there's a lot to learn yeah. about this. But what we will do is once the talk is recorded and um, put online, we'll add it to the show notes so people can learn a bit more. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with us? Yeah, just one more thing. Yeah? Uh, I don't know if you have n ever noticed, but uh, Android Studio sometimes seems to know a lot about what you're doing wrong <laughs> before you realize it. Right. So, for example, it usually tells you, look out, this might be null, or look out, you need to call uh, super uh, in this method because otherwise uh -huh. things will break. Right. And that's a kind of subtle bugs that you can avoid. And this is coming back to the, the avoiding bugs right, exactly. part of it. Yeah. So um, as part of my talk as well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, covering the, the support annotations. So okay. support annotations is one of the uh, dependencies in the support library family, mm. which is actually already included in as a dependency in support before and thus okay. in app compat. So, you, so it comes for free if you you basically app which who doesn't use app compat? Come yeah. on. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So you basically already have it in your class part, and you can mm -hmm. just reference it, and uh, that that is useful because you can define some contracts for your code. Okay that the IDE will help you enforce and lint at build time as well if you want. So how does that work? Is that the annotations are in the Android SDK source code? Yes. Or is it in your own code? Uh, well, the, the IDE knows about the bugs because the, uh, the support libraries, the Android SDK... Oh, they're all annotated they're already. They're all annotated already. Oh, okay. But if you want to have your own code, your own APIs, your own yeah. business logic, then right. you can do the same that they do. Oh, you know what? I think I've and done then, that before. So like I will have, for example, a helper function that takes in a resource ID. Yes. And I will annotate it with at drawable rest. Yes. So that if I, for some reason, put in a string there, and Andrew Studio is like, yeah. no, 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 that needs to be a drawable resource. Exactly. Uh -huh. it, which is really cool because uh, by, by themselves, the resource IDs are just it's plain int. int. Yeah. And they don't mean anything. Right. So it's kind of bringing some type safety of sorts to, uh -huh. to the whole thing, which is nice. I see. So it's, it's a supplement to the type because yes. the type is integer, but yeah. it's actually a drawable. You know, it's a secretly yeah. telling, <laughs> telling yeah. Android Studio. And it's great because like you said, you know, it's your, you don't work alone, right? So when other people yes. come in and they look at this function, it may say res ID, yeah. but then, oh, now but we know it's for drawable. It's that's especially tricky with, uh, with colors because you never know, uh, am I supposed to pass the color resource ID right. or the both actual int. color? <laughs> yeah, yes. that is so. a good point. I have done that before. And then everything is Wasn't. ugly shade of yellow. <laughs> And like, why is everything yellow? It's like, oh, because yeah, you just passed in the yeah. resource ID as the color, and then Android was interpreting it as a color. Yes. That's a good Been point. I need that. to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who has not seen it? Yeah. So 
good tip. Like now, well, that was before the, they have the annotations. Though. So yeah. now I will be much yeah. more diligent in putting in. But the you might have your own custom views that need some additional colors on top of what like a text view might take. Right. So in that case, it's good practice to annotate it. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, all over the internet. No. All over the internet. <laughs> um, you can find me on Google Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like my name, Stan <laughs> It's gonna appear here, I'm sure. Well, we will at least put it on the show notes. Yeah. I don't know how much fancy YouTube uh, unless, we're gonna Unless do. you have like a pen and paper, I can write it. <laughs> oh, maybe. Uh, well, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I can, I'll try to do something make it look nice yeah. and fancy. That's cool. the best place to. So to Google help. Plus is yeah. where we'll find you. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, and uh, enjoy JoyCon. Thank you, and thank you very much for having me here. Bye. See ya. <laughs>